Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. This is part two of my video about how I plan and execute and work out my monthly shopping plan, the thought process behind managing to feed everyone for a month and things like that. When I recorded it all, I put it all in the computer and it was just too long to put into one video, so I broke it into two. So this is part two, so I hope you enjoy. Please let me know anything in the comments that uh, you were that I missed or that you want me to cover and I will see you again tomorrow I will start with my food prep for the month tomorrow uh, I've been doing plenty of stuff over the last couple of days and filming it so I'll collate it all and put it all together and start with my food prep videos my daily ones to start with tomorrow to cover all the stuff that I'm doing with all the stuff that I purchased to show you the the end result of this of the stuff that I'm talking about to show you what I do with that stuff once I get it home and and planning it so I do it theoretically in this video how I planned it and then practically in the next few videos thanks very much for watching So there are sometimes meals that are a bit out of the ordinary for normal that are requested. So I try to make a note of that and I try to accommodate that as much as possible. So this month there was chicken kias, which I just mince up whatever chicken I happen to have to make that rather than using breasts because it works out more cost effective. And I use my sourdough crumbs and stuff like that. They're really tasty. Uh, they're not standard chicken kievs but they have the same effect and of course we don't use dairy so it makes a little bit of difference as well but they were requested so I have I will use some of the I will mince up some of the thighs once they're deboned and de-skinned and use them to make kievs the other thing I got requested was some uh, more pork buns except I think I'll use bao buns this time I'm not sure how that's pronounced bao bao buns uh, so rather than making the filled buns I might make the flat ones that they can fold their own fillings into I think it will be more time time saving time I don't know time efficient for me than filling buns for them so I think I will make some of those for them as well and of course I made a note that I needed the silver side to use the cure from Elise uh, other than that, nothing specific was requested. Daryl requested his anchovies that I bought him, the pickled marinated anchovies that he eats, which are his choice, that's fine. Um, and I got corn chips because we've been making salsa. So that's the main meal planning that I do. Uh, then it, I hit I hit up the veg, fruit and veg store and I get whatever is in season and inexpensive at the time. I do generally buy bananas no matter what, oh, sorry, not bananas. I gen generally buy apples no matter what because it's the kids' favorite. Um, the apples were $2 a kilo, which isn't expensive, but isn't particularly cheap either. And when they are cheap, I am planning on getting some for canning and I will can them to use out of season. The other things, I got some tomatoes, it's end of season for tomatoes, but there was some uh, sauce tomatoes for $15 for a box that I got because I'm going to make some more salsa um, as well because we've really been enjoying that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sonnet wanted to share her Play-Doh person with you. His name is Big Bang. His name is what? Big Bang. Big Bang, apparently, his name is. Uh, so yeah, fruit and veg, I ordered, I got two boxes of the tomatoes because I want to make more salsa. I have plenty of jalapenos coming out of the garden still. So I'm going to make a big batch of salsa and a friend would like some of that as well. So I'm going to give that to her. And mandarins were cheap. They were a dollar per kilo, so I grabbed those. I don't really do anything with mandarins. They are purely for fresh eating. You can segment them and can them, but if you've got any of the white pith on them, then they don't can real well. That's a lot of work. Kids will eat them straight. Uh, the carrots were really cheap, so the plan with the carrots is to uh, the kids will eat most of them fresh. They they snack on carrots all month, um, and I'm going to grate a whole bunch. Yes. Can we have like the other colors? No, I prefer you didn't open any more at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the I will grate some of the carrots up and freeze them in uh, pucks in like a in muffin tins or whatever to use for making carrot cakes or muffins or whatever later on when in the month because the carrots do oxidize in the fridge they te do tend to go black uh, so it's better to use 
more of them in the beginning of the month than and rather than them going bad though the kids will just peel them and eat them for a long time so long as they're not squishy they don't really care which is great uh the there wasn't a lot else that was inexpensive this month um next month hopefully will be some cold veggies some cabbages so i can make some more pickled coleslaw and uh, maybe some granny smiths will be in by then and cheap things like that so we will see so the plan fruit and veg plans are always based on whatever is available and i'm not going to know that until i go and get it so i don't pre-plan that i definitely just work with what i can get i have an idea of what i'd like to get like i do want to get granny smith apples to do uh, apple canned apples but I don't know when that will be so whenever I happen to get that that will be the work that is required from that and uh, I was hoping to get some tomatoes this month I managed to get some which is great but if I didn't then that's life too so I definitely go via that all right so what else the other thing I do is I keep all my receipts so I have a spreadsheet that I fill out each month that I put in exactly what I purchased and how much it cost so that I have a comparison for next time when I'm purchasing. I have a, a price per 100 grams so that I know the comparison costing from place to place and so that I have a record of what I bought when, which helps me to manage how quickly I go through things as well. So that's the other thing that you have to get a handle on is how much you use in a period of time. I do believe that portioning really helps with the ability to figure that out but there's also the need to just be aware of if you're cooking certain things in a month then you might go through something quicker than if you didn't cook that item so you don't always cook the same things you in a month's time you tend to but if you're doing weekly or fortnightly not necessarily you might have a meal that you only have every fortnight and you shop weekly so one of those items that you use on a fortnightly basis you're not necessarily going to need on a weekly basis as an example so you need to be aware of how much you go through over each item in a month as well and be aware of how much you need on the shelf as an excess so i like to have at least one unopened on the shelf of every item that i buy so if I've just opened a soy sauce, for example, I will put soy sauce on my list to buy so that there's an unopened one to go on the shelf. But there's certain things that it takes so long to go through the open one that even if it's on my list, I can look at it and go, eh, if, if it's not real cheap or, or if I've overspent, I don't need to get it. So this month I had, I put soy sauce on my list because I'd cracked open the last bottle and there was none left on the shelf. But when I went shopping and I was doing, I tend to add up as I'm going while I'm shopping so I know about how much I spend at the, by the time I get to the cash register. And I decided not to grab another soy sauce because realistically, one of those bottles of soy sauce lasts me a few months. So I've got a couple of months before I need that one on the shelf. Uh, if it was on sale, I would have grabbed it because that would have been the saving, a cost saving for later on. But it wasn't and I didn't really need it, so I bypassed it. So there has to be an awareness of what you've got on your shelf at home and how quickly you go through those products. Uh, we, I buy two ghee, two jars of ghee a month, knowing that we can easily go through two. And then when it was on sale, I bought an extra two. So now we have one on the shelf, even when I bought the two home. So we're a little bit ahead that way. Uh, and that's a great way to be too. So if you've got the money when something's on sale to buy yourself that extra portion of it, then you're not gonna be worrying about it the next time when you don't have the funds. And you will have saved money because you've bought it on sale. I'm going to have to go and listen to this whole video back to see if I covered everything. But in a wrap up of it, the main things that I can say are to be is to create a list or a spreadsheet or something that works for you that allows you to see exactly how much of everything you go through each month because that's or each shopping period, because that's going to be key to being able to purchase enough to get through that shopping period so if you don't if you run out of something and you go to the shop to buy it you're more than likely going to buy half a dozen other things because that's what people do they go to the shop to buy a, a sauce or a single ingredient or a soap or, or whatever that they need and they walk out of the shop with a basket full of items so that's going to kick your budget out and it's going to be stuff that you didn't necessarily need but you saw and thought oh it's on special or Oh, I could make this or whatever else ignoring the stuff that you'd already planned so you want to try and avoid going to a shop for anything as much as possible you want to be able to shop from your shelves from your pantry from your fridge and freezer and whatever else to try and make sure that you have what you need to get through a month so towards the end of the month here we do get a little bit lean 
we do get a little bit repetitive. Let me just straighten this camera up a little bit. There we, go. we do get a little bit repetitive. We do uh, eat far more um, home-baked bread than we do at the beginning of the month. We eat less fresh fruit, less fresh veggies, but because I buy in bulk in season at the beginning of the month, we preserve some of those things to be eaten later on in the month. They're not, it's not as nice as having fresh fruit or fresh veggies, but it's perfectly fine uh, nutritionally and uh, it just becomes a little boring sometimes. But that's part and parcel of saving money on a budget is by eating what is available when it's available. Frozen veggies are not my favorite thing in the world, but they are perfectly fine when you need veggies to have with a meal and you don't have anything fresh. They will do the job. Every meal doesn't have to be a gourmet meal. Uh, yes, it's nice to have really nice flavored meals, really nice textured meals and that as often as possible, but not every meal has to be gourmet and you have to come to terms with that if you're going to stretch a meal as well and it's just about getting everyone fed and and sometimes uh, I really find that canning helps me a lot here buying in season and being able to can things being able to make a meal off my shelves without much preparation is extraordinarily handy in the ability to not feel like we're lacking so you get to the end of the month you go I don't know what we're having for dinner I <laughs> just we've eaten all the yummy stuff and and I just go just grab a couple of jars of soup off the shelf and we'll put it with some pasta or some fresh bread and when you cook it up it's it's a great meal because it was made when it was fresh and it was all the rest of it and it's homemade and it's just but it's easy to just grab off the shelf and having that there really benefits us or having the jars of like plums or apples or anything else and knowing that you're short on ingredients but you've got flour and stuff so uh, there's still oats left so let's just throw a jar of fruit in a in a bowl and put some crisp topping on top bake it up and that boring meal now has a fruit crumble for dessert and that has perked it all up so having excess on your shelves being able to can or freeze or bulk prep for the times when decisions are too hard because there's just not a lot of food is is very helpful in stretching that monthly shop as well another thing that helps especially towards the end of the month or the end of the shopping period is having good stocked spices so I like to buy my spices in bulk and I like to always have them lots of spices always have salt pepper um, and my main ones are paprika thyme sesame seeds poppy seeds garlic onion Italian seasoning that sort of thing it's amazing how much you can perk a meal up by just adding some spices or perk a jar of meat up or some frozen meat that was in the fridge with a bit of spices uh, make a flavored oil or butter to put on bread which you know elevates a meal as well that sort of thing so having spices salt and things like that available is definitely a good way to help stretch food and still make it interesting and tasty still make it something you want to eat because the problem lies that if you have got all this food left but it's all boring stuff that you don't really like then you're going to avoid eating it and you're going to either buy other stuff or uh, get takeaways or whatever else we're somewhat lucky in this situation in that we can't go anywhere uh, there's a IGA or a food works in town and occasionally Daryl will buy something and he's in there buying food for the animals or something a bag of corn chips or some fresh milk or um, a specific vegetable that I'd really like uh, but generally speaking we can't get any more than what we get and that's and we make it work and that is part and parcel of how we make it work because we don't have a lot of choice and I've got a decent stockpile because we're so isolated and we have to make it work and I suppose the last thing is a garden having a garden is definitely beneficial for adding a few sprigs of herbs or a few bits of greens or a an occasional fresh cabbage turnip beetroot all those sorts of things into your diet that allows you to have that added fresh vegetables and stuff when you don't have it fresh from your groceries uh, the Mr. Stacky Stackers that I showed in one of my other videos, I'll put a card up and there's a, a discount code for it as well, would be great in a small situation. It has the ability for you to grow lettuce and spinach and herbs and all that sort of thing in a fairly small space and a decent amount of them. 
You could grow just about anything in there, depending on how you were feeding the stacky, the Mr. Stacky. Uh, the vertical planter is similar to a green stalk in America, and they would be good for balconies or small spaces. And that having extensive gardens like mine, I know aren't something that everyone can do. But no matter what size you have, it's just about working out what to plant and when to plant it, because you only want to plant things that you're actually going to eat too. Uh, and rotating your crops and stuff accordingly to your microclimate and everything else. So it's quite an extensive sort of a, a investment of time and sometimes money to get gardens going, but it's a long-term return uh, and it definitely helps if you're going to grow things it, sorry it definitely helps if you're going to do uh, lengthy groceries like monthly or six monthly or whatever uh, shorter term isn't such a big deal like if you're doing fortnightly groceries and you manage to work that out so that you've got the convenience of being able to do it then you have the convenience of being able to purchase fresh fruit and veg on a fortnightly basis but the reason that I get my fruit and veg so cheap is because of the quantities that I'm buying so I buy things by the box and if I was shopping weekly I wouldn't necessarily need the box I probably would still buy it but then the next week I'd buy a box too so my budget would be blown out because because it was there they would eat it and they'd eat it in a hurry because they know that they're gonna get more the next week so to a degree deprivation helps the budget not that my children are deprived in any way but having certain things available at certain parts of the month and then other parts of the month they have to deal like the rice milk that we buy I've been having trouble getting it lately the children really prefer store-bought rice milk it doesn't seem to matter what I make or the methods I use they just don't seem to like it apparently it tastes like rice I it's funny that rice milk tastes like rice but anyway the uh they much prefer the store-bought stuff Lately, we've only been getting enough to last for about a fortnight. So for the last fortnight or last three or four weeks, depending on how often I'm going shopping, they're having to do without. So they don't eat cereal as such. Uh, I buy wheat bix, cornflakes and rice bubbles. And they eat that in the first fortnight while they've got the rice milk. But once they run out of rice milk, they fall back on things like my sourdough granola with yogurt or uh, porridge or uh, my baked breakfast bars and things like that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the way it works so whilst they are being deprived of their choice of foods they have other options that they will fall back on because they have no choice this has helped our budget moving to monthly shopping has helped our budget because you make things work you make things stretch and you make meals from what you've got left because you don't have a whole lot of choice you have to stick to that though if you have the ability to go shopping just down the road then you need to make sure that you don't do that that if you've committed to a monthly shopping you make that month work uh, and by by going elsewhere during that month to top things up your budget's going to blow out really quickly so you have to be aware of that so anyway i have rambled on more than enough i'm going to have to have a look at the length of this video and assess what needs to be shared and what doesn't uh, and i hope that that has helped if you have any questions about anything that i've spoken about please feel free to ask them in the comments and i will respond i respond to all comments uh, otherwise on my instagram maybe i'll do a question time on my instagram in the stories and then i can answer the questions and everyone can see the answers there as well uh, we'll see how it works but i'm happy to go to address this again further uh, hopefully I've covered things well enough to to help people to understand how we've made it work we've been doing this for over 12 months now I think I'm pretty sure it was before Christmas of last year that we started doing the monthly shops and I cut my grocery bill almost in half so by doing my four-hour trip to Brisbane and back four hours each way and spending that I'm lucky that I've got my mum there so I can spend the night rather than having to cram it all in a day by shopping the fruit and veg store um, in season buying things by the box preserving it going to Costco and all the rest of it our fourteen hundred dollars per four to six weeks we were spending probably a thousand dollars a fortnight when we were doing it more locally and I I really believe that's just because we were buying double the amount of some of the stuff because we could buy it each fortnight and we weren't using it adequately and now we are using it 
more adequately. I have changed the way I shop to a degree, of course. As I've said, I buy a lot of raw ingredients and I make nearly everything from scratch rather than buying pre-made. So I used to buy mayo in the jar and things like that and I no longer do that. I only buy olive oil and I buy the add-ins that I'd like to use in my mayo which are used for multi-purposes so like mustards and things like that that I use for other things anyway and I make all my own mayo. So by doing that I've streamlined the quantity of things. You saw that there's only a single page basically of everything that we stock in the house and I can make everything I make from that stocking. So yes we'll see uh, i hope it's helped let me know and ask questions and if this has not made any sense then let me know that too and i will see you again next time thanks for watching